In a world where Wi-Fi signals whisper sweet nothings to your devices, where pockets are preyed upon by the lurking shadows, and where your data is the ultimate victim, comes a terror so sinister, so diabolical, so, so middlemanish. Welcome to Blacksploit Network, where we are about to unleash a pterosaur heinous, so diabolical, so delightfully educational. Today we're going to perform a man in the middle attack, specifically a poisoner. Because who doesn't love a good game of data interception? It's like a digital game of tag, where we're it and your pockets are, let's just say, tagged. Well? Someone had to do it. But fear not, dear cybersecurity ninjas. This video is for educational purposes only. We're not actually plotting to steal your cat videos or Netflix passwords. Who are we? So grab your favorite snack, put on your best I'm a cybersecurity mastermind face, and get ready to learn how to perform a man in the middle attack like a pro. But before we begin, here's the disclaimer. If you're easily offended, easily confused, or easily convinced to do things that might lend you in a dark alley with a hooded wearing stranger, please stop watching now. Blacksploit Network is not responsible for any damage to your ego, your network, or your social life. Watching this video may lead to excessive knowledge, spontaneous laughter, or sudden urge to buy a router. Proceed at your own risk. Just kidding. It's just a video, folks. Right. So to better understand how op poisoning really works, Here's a graphical representation of my home lab. I have here my Windows 10 machine on the left, a switch in the middle, and a router forming a small local network of 192.168.99.0 slash 24. Before the R poisoning attack, the standard op process would have already occurred, where the Windows 10 machine sends an op request to the switch asking for the MAC address of the router at IP 192.168.99.1. The switch broadcasts the op request to all connected devices. The router responds with a unicast message of its genuine MAC address that ends with 07CE. The switch updates its op table and forwards the unicast message to Windows 10. The Windows 10 machine receives the op response and updates its own op table with the router's IP MAC address mapping. This standard op process allows for the Windows 10 machine to communicate with the router. Now let's move on to how the attacker manipulates this process. Enter the attacker's machine, running Kelly Linux which is connected to the same switch as the Windows 10 machine and router. The attacker's goal is to intercept the communication between the Windows 10 machine and the router. Here's how the op poisoning occurs. The attacker's machine sends a fake op response directly to the Windows 10 machine, claiming to be the router, with its own MAC address that ends with 7EF5. This is like a digital impersonation where the attacker's machine pretends to be the router. At the same time, the attacker's machine sends another fake op response directly to the router, claiming to be the Windows machine, again with its own MAC address that ends with 7EF5. This is like a double impersonation, where the attacker's machine pretends to be the Windows 10 machine too. The Windows 10 machine and the router, unaware of the trickery, update their op tables with the fake MAC address, mapping each other's IP addresses to the attacker's MAC address that ends with 7EF5. With this, the Kali machine becomes the middleman intercepting and manipulating communication between the Windows 10 machine and the router. Now that we've set the stage for the man in the middle attack, let's get our hands dirty. We'll switch over to the Kali Linux machine our trusty attack vessel, here we'll use the sudo netdiscover-r192.168.99.0-24 command to scan the network and identify our targets. And voila, we've got two devices on our radar, the router 192.168.99.1 and the Windows 10 machine 192.168.99.15. We'll take note of their MAC addresses like a sneaky spy gathering intel. Now let's get to know our own color machine a little better. We'll use the ifconfig command to reveal its MAC address. And there it is. Our color machine's MAC address is like its digital fingerprint. And we've got it on file. 
Next, we'll sneak over to the Windows 10 machine and open up Command Prompt, or CMD for short. We'll use the ipconfig command to confirm its IP address, which we already discovered on our Kali machine. Also, with the op-a command, we can snoop into the Windows 10 machine's op cache and see what it thinks the router's MAC address is. And boom. It's the same as what we found on our Kali machine. Folks, we're getting close. Our man in the middle attack is just around the corner. Stay tuned. Okay, back on our trusty color machine, we're going to unleash a powerful command. Just follow along. This is like flipping a switch that turns our color machine into a digital traffic cop. With this command, we're enabling IP forwarding, which allows our machine to forward packets between networks. It's like setting up a detour sign that redirects traffic from the Windows 10 machine to the router, right through our Kali machine. In short, this command enables our machine to play the role of a router, allowing us to intercept and manipulate traffic between the Windows 10 machine and the router. It's like we're building a digital trap, and this command is the bait. Next, we'll summon the perfect tool for the job, Etacap. With the command sudo etacap-g, we'll unleash the graphical interface of this powerful tool, making it easier to navigate and manipulate the network traffic. And because we're curious cybersecurity analysts, we'll also fire up Wireshark to get a glimpse of what's really happening on the base level. It's like having a network microscope, allowing us to examine the tiny details of the traffic flowing between the Windows 10 machine and the router. With Etacap and Wireshark by our side, we'll be able to intercept and analyze the traffic, making it easier to identify vulnerabilities and craft our man in the middle attack. It's like having a superpower allowing us to see and control the invisible forces of the network. Back on the Etacap GUI, we'll click on the magnifying glass icon to search for our targeted devices. This is like sending out a digital scouting party to gather intel on the network. Etacap will send op requests to the entire network, which might raise some eyebrows if you're running a pen test on a network that's not your own. Just saying, don't try this at the office, folks. But since it's our own home lab, we're good to go. As the search results come in, we can see on the bottom left of the GUI that two hosts have been added to the host list. Great, huh? We already know these are our targets the router, and the Windows 10 machine. Now let's continue our man-in-the-middle attack and see what kind of trouble we can steer up. Now let's head over to the server icon and select our targets. We'll choose the Windows 10 machine as target 1 and the router as target 2. It's like we're setting our sights on a digital prey. Next, we'll click on the world icon and leave the settings as is. Sniffing remote connections. This is like setting up our digital surveillance waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Before we fire up the attack, let's quickly restart Wireshark to make sure we're capturing all the juicy details. And back on Etacap, we'll click Start Sniffing to unleash our all poison attack. Whoa, did it work? Let's find out. We'll head over to the Wireshark and dive into the sea of op messages. Oh, look at that. The first op message is quite revealing. Right here on source MAC address is our Kali machines and destination is the Windows 10 machines MAC address. And what's this? The op code is reply to, meaning this is an unsolicited message. Our Kali machine is impersonating the router and the Windows 10 machine is none the wiser. If we look at the second op message, we see the same trickery at play. The destination is the router's MAC address, and again, the opcode is reply to. Another unsolicited message. Our attack was a success. We've managed to trick both the Windows 10 machine and the router into thinking our Kali machine is the real deal. It's like we've pulled off the ultimate digital heist. Oh, that gives me an idea for a movie. Ah, uh, snap, it's already been done. It's called Lyft. Yeah. anyway. Let's continue to explore the depths of our successful man-in-the-middle attack. 
Let's head over to the Windows 10 machine to confirm our handiwork. Previously, the ARP cache showed the router's IP address associated with a different MAC address. But now, after our man in the middle attack, the ARP cache shows the router's IP address associated with our Kali machine's MAC address. Any communication between the Windows 10 machine and the router will now be intercepted by our Kali machine. Let's test this by pinging the router from the Windows 10 machine and seeing what shows up in the Wireshark on our Kali machine. And there it is. ICMP messages generated by the ping from the Windows 10 machine show up in our Wireshark on our Kali machine. This is the part of the man in the middle attack. We can intercept and analyze packets flowing between the Windows 10 machine and the router. But important to note, while we can intercept these packets, encrypted SSL packets will remain hidden from us unless we have the encryption keys. SSL TLS encryption keeps the contents of these packets secure, even from a sneaky man in the middle or talker like us. Time to wrap up our man in the middle session. Let's head back to Etikap and click the stop icon to halt the attack and look at the bottom left, re-opping victims. That's Etikap's way of saying we're giving the Windows 10 machine and the router their rightful Intel back. Let's verify this by heading over to the Windows 10 machine and running op-a one last time. And voila. The Windows 10 machine now has the correct MAC address for the router again. Our man in the middle attack has been reversed and everything is back to normal. It's like we were never there. Sneaky and stealthy as a digital ninja. Hiya! Well, that's all for today's man in the middle attack tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the thrill of intercepting packets and manipulating network traffic. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use your newfound skills wisely, or you might just find yourself on the receiving end of a digital wedgie. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts or questions. And if you didn't, well, I'll just man in the middle your cap videos and make them play on repeat. <laughs> yes, I will. Thanks for watching and may the code be with you.